on this episode of Lady K Sailing. We sail our beautiful Norman's Key. We work on some electrical problems and we go swimming with the piggies. Norman's Key was beautiful, and not very many people come into Norman's Key because the entrance is so tricky. If you watch our last episode, you can see how we made it in, and we saw six feet of water pretty much the whole way through. Finally, though, we have to weigh anchor and we have to get out of here. One of the things people don't really tell you about cruising in the tropics is it's not all really good days and really good sailing weather. Actually, most of the time, the wind is either way too strong or out of the completely wrong direction. So you end up sitting in different places for three or four days waiting for 30 knot winds to kind of blow through and get out of your way so you can go safely make it to the next port. That's why we're in Norman's Key, but finally the winds are forecast to be 10 to 15, so we are on our way to Staniel Key. So, we're out in the middle of nowhere, on the ocean, and the world's not a very big place. Because who do we hear chattering on the radio? Barefoot 2, our buddy boat that we met in Annapolis and ran with uh, from Annapolis to Miami. Caught up with them in Bimini, and now they're right here. small ocean. So we're just reeling them in right now. Uh, they're just running on the jib. We got the jib and the main. It's a bit breezy. And uh, holy crap. Um, anyway, they ended up, we called them on the radio and ends up they're going exactly the same place we are. Interesting. secret Candace and I are super into Kenny Chesney because he kind of writes the theme songs for the life we're living uh, so we have our Kenny Chesney no shoes nation flag right there and funny story so do they and so do they really cool we've never been in an anchorage with three Kenny Chesney flags before it's pretty sweet barefoot too right there um, obviously ran into them today and we ended up anchored in the same location so buddy boats back together again um, we traveled with them from Annapolis to Miami and then uh, they got a week ahead of us but we got to Bimini and they were still there and now we've caught them again so pretty sweet so uh, Staniel Key off the hook this place look at it it's just stunning absolutely stunning blue water we went into the uh, Staniel Key Yacht Club and grabbed a burger and some fish tacos. Fish tacos. Um, really, really sweet place. All the stores are closed though. We came in here because we needed fuel and water and stuff and they have everything. The fuel dock has RO water and uh, we were able to top up the fuel tanks and the water tanks and everything. So we're good for that. But we got to go into town tomorrow and get some supplies, some fresh produce and that kind of stuff. So we're going to be here. And then there's a big blow coming in tomorrow night for four days of really strong easterlies. So we're going to be probably just chilling right here for a week. Not mad about it. you kind of a little bit of a problem we're having with our boat uh we're just chilling out watching sailboat story we love these guys um if you haven't seen them yet you should definitely check them out anyway um i had to unhook the batteries because one of the terminals got a lot of corrosion on it and i took a wire brush to it and cleaned it all up and it's fine now but 
Um, when you unhook the batteries, you lose your uh, Xantrex battery monitor. So uh, the batteries were at like, I don't know, 70% when we woke up today. Um, and we can see that by the percentage gauge on the monitor. But right now it says 100% because when you unhook the batteries entirely, this monitor goes dark and it doesn't know anymore what the actual capacity in the batteries is. Um, I know you can read the voltage, but that's not an accurate number as far as what's left in the batteries because the fridge is on and there's other things on and things like that. So it, it'll read 12.2 volts or something even when the batteries are full uh, because something is actually pulling voltage out. So the only accurate way to do it is with a battery monitor like this and that has a negative shunt. So it knows every single amp that comes in or out of the batteries 100% of the time provided it got hooked up while the batteries were at 100%. Um, if you hook it up and the batteries are at 70%, it has no idea, it thinks you're at 100. The only way to synchronize it with the batteries is to get the batteries completely full. So not knowing what's in the batteries isn't something that we're willing to live with. So we're gonna get the batteries completely full. To do that, we're running our generator out there and we're running our main battery charger, which is this one which is a Pro Sport 20 amp two bank. Um, and then we're also running this guy, which we picked up uh, in case of emergency. So that's a 30 amp, just a West Marine dockside with the big clamps on it. Uh, we never used it before. We just have it on board in case something goes wrong. But anyway, um, so it's putting in 30 amps and the solar is putting in uh, about 160 watts we're under a cloud right now. So when the cloud goes, we'll be up to about 300 watts. Um, so 30 amps from this, 300 watts from that. And then the Pro Start, uh, Pro Sport thing is running at probably about 15 amps. It usually runs at, it's a 20 amp charger, but it's not very good. Um, so anyway, we're getting 50 to 60 amps right now. When the sun goes out of the way, it's 60 amps coming in to charge our battery bank, which is here. Which is for golf carts, of course. So yeah, the idea is, just get them up to 100% as quickly as we possibly can, and then the gauge will resynchronize at 100%, and then we can shut off the generator and just run on the solar, and the little battery monitor will show us how much is coming in from the solar, minus however much is going out into the boat system, so the fridge and whatever else we happen to be using. This laptop is uh, probably charging right now, and it's running off the inverter, and anyway, so figured I'd share with you guys that's a problem what we've been having, and that's how we're gonna fix it today. Hey guys, welcome to Staniel Key. Wow. We're gonna give you a little tour right now and show you two very, very special beaches that are here in Staniel Key that you definitely wanna check out. Let's go. First beach, world famous pig beach where people come from all over the world to swim with the piggies. Not even kidding, there's pigs here. A lot of touristy people though, so we'll go check it out and show you guys. Hello little piggy.
Hey guys, welcome to beach number two. This is Cruisers Beach. So, uh, lots of stuff has just kind of been left here for fellow cruisers that come in and stay here. Uh, we've been here for two nights, well, we stayed for two nights and had a uh, fire. We did a Christmas Eve dinner and big fire. We donated our flag because we got some new ones coming. And yeah, pretty cool place. Okay, so uh, we thought we'd take a little opportunity while we're chilling in Staniel Key and it's too windy to go anywhere to answer a few of the most popular questions that we've got on YouTube and Facebook and all that kind of stuff and just sort of answer them all publicly so that everybody knows the answer because uh, we get asked the same five or six questions quite often. Oh, yeah. So uh, I guess uh, I'll answer the ones that sort of pertain to the electrical and stuff. Um, the first one is how much solar do you guys have and is it enough? We have 550 watts. No, it's not enough. Um, primarily because we run a YouTube channel and we have to charge a lot of equipment. We have to run a, a big, powerful computer to be able to do this video editing. Um, so with 550 watts into 450 amp hours of battery, I wish we had more. Um, to be honest, what we need is probably a wind generator and it'd have to be a really good one, but the money's not there for a really good wind generator. So we're just gonna have to suck it up and not have enough solar. For now. For now. For now. Yeah. Um, Next question, uh, what apps do you guys use for wind? Do you have wind instruments um, and navigation? Um, if you want to talk to those things because you check them every morning. That's true. Um, so for wind, um, we don't have wind indicators on the boat, uh, or not indicators, uh, instruments. Um, but we do use the, uh, the apps Windy and Wind Finder. Uh, those are our top two and between the two like one's either a little too low and one's a little too high for the wind So you kind of just pick a number in the middle and it's dead on Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like last night was blowing Real close to 40 knots yeah. and like we felt it all night long yeah. and that's exactly what between the two apps was predicted so um, pretty accurate yeah. um, Navigation navigation we use uh, we've got tablets. We've got two iPad minis uh, I've had many twos yeah and we use both of them um, for navigation, one up kind of in the companion way so whoever's trimming can see and then one at the helm obviously. And we use Navionics. Um, the know, HD one. The HD one. The expensive one. <laughs> so I know we should have paper charts and so on and so forth. We but do have some. We, yeah, we do, but we're they're- not, We're not completely without. We haven't used them. Yeah. <laughs> we usually yeah, really stick to Navionics. Haven't needed them. Pretty, pretty dead on accuracy as well. So, if I could talk about the tablets for a sec, too, I had a conversation with one of our viewers yesterday about which tablets to get, and a lot of people want to use Android tablets and Samsung tablets that are a little bit cheaper. Um, I can't speak directly to that. I think every single boat I've ever seen using a tablet is an iPad. It's so rare to see somebody using an Android tablet, though you can, Navionics runs on it. Um, the thing that you have to be aware of is it has to be a GPS tablet, which basically means in iPad language, you have to get the cellular version. You can't just get the Wi-Fi only iPad, it has to be cellular. You don't have to put a SIM card in it or use its cellular capabilities at all, but the cellular versions always have their own independent GPS chip. If it's not the cellular version, it can do a little bit of GPS work based on cell towers, but that doesn't work in the ocean. So if you're using iPads, make sure that the cellular version and watch the screen size. A very big screen takes a lot of power. And yes, you can have a USB port at your home like we do, but Navionics uses so much power and that big screen uses so much power that you'll find it doesn't actually charge. It might just sit at 1% all day long and never charge, but it also may never die. We met a, a, another couple that was using a very big iPad and he was saying it's always slowly, slowly dying even though it's plugged in. Um, the screen's very big and Navionics is very, very powerful. So we use the little seven inch iPad minis, cellular version, two of them, sign into both of them with the same Apple ID and you can download Navionics on both and only pay for it once. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, the rain catching system, uh, which actually doubles because I wanted to answer why I had 3M4200 marine sealant in my beard earlier in the video. Um, our rain catching system, we put eaves troughs around the solar panels and I will show you guys, it's very windy up there so you won't be able to hear me, so I'll explain it first. Um, we put metal flashing all the way around with two little downspouts and tubes that go into water jugs, but we found it was leaking where the metal met the solar panel. So, 
I had to go up there and put 4200 in, which is very, very difficult when you're hanging sort of on the side of the boat. So let me show you. So it's all sealed up now. We got downspouts right here. It goes down a tube and into a water jet. So yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, it works. Uh, both uh, we have one water jug on each side. They're seven gallon jugs, and they were both full this morning. So Yay. I mean, it rained a lot yesterday. We had a lot of squalls. Oh yes. And there's a chance another one may hit any time now. Yeah, They're so, calling for scatters. Yeah, we got two empty jugs now, so we're ready to go. Yeah. Um, do you have any regrets? Should have bought more bathing suits before I left. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I think genuinely this life is pretty good. It's, it's awesome. I mean, you miss people back home and everything. And this was our, our first Christmas where we were nowhere near home or family. But all the cruisers here got together on the cruisers beach on Christmas Eve. We had a big fire and a potluck and it was just like a big, it's your other family, right? Yeah, it, was, it meant a lot. It meant a lot when you can't be with your own, you know, blood family or with yeah. friends and family back home. It, uh, it meant a great deal to, you know, spend the spend the day and the night with uh, like-minded folks. Yeah. Real good. So, Pretty sweet. Yeah, that was a great time. <laughs> um, we get asked a lot, especially on live streams, how big of a boat do I need to do what you guys are doing? That's a really tricky question because there's some 26 footers in here and there's some 25 footers doing this. Um, we're on a 35 and it's plenty big enough for two people. Um, there are three or four people living on boats this size and then there's, you know, 50 foot cats and things like that. So how big of a boat is really up to you and your budget? Um, I would do it again on a 35. I'd probably do it on a 30. Um, crossing the Gulf Stream is the hardest part. So you just have to be, if you're on a smaller boat, you have to be very, very, very conscious of the weather. Um, a little bit bigger boat's going to be more forgiving and go out in a little bit bigger wind. But I mean, that's up to your sailing capabilities. It's up to the condition of the boat. It's up to what comfort level you have. Um, really, you could do it on just about anything. I think if I had to start over, it'd probably be the same boat. Like it would probably be a 35 or something in the mid 30s um, because it's super cheap. You can pick them up for like 10 grand all day long as long as you're willing to do a bunch of work on the boat. We got ours for nine, needed a whole bunch of work, but I mean, it was seaworthy, it was saleable. We started racing and as soon as we bought it, there was nothing wrong with it. We just had to do a bit more electrical stuff just to outfit it for what we planned to do. Um, and that was all just out of our, our own discretion. There wasn't anything we needed. But yeah, it, you could pretty much do it on anything. Yeah. Um, and then the other question we get asked almost every single video is what video editing software do you use? Um, we have Adobe Premiere Pro and we have Cyberlink Power Director. We use Cyberlink Power Director 99% of the time. We find Adobe to be um, way too unnecessarily complicated. You almost need to go to school just for that product. And uh, I, I can do it. I made a few edit videos with it, but it's just brutally difficult to use. There's nothing is intuitive. It's just, it's very, very not good. I, I didn't enjoy it. Mind you, I haven't actually made a video yet. Um, thank you, I love you. Uh, I will eventually. And I feel like watch while I watch him um, with the Adobe, I he lost yeah. me. That's all witchcraft. Yeah. And but with the the Cyberlink, I. I've got the basics. I yeah. would have to ask a few questions here and there, just for particulars. But it's uh, it's pretty easy. Drag and I drop. Think. It's yeah, very drag, drag and drop. drop. It's um, I can do that. Yeah. I can drag and drop. <laughs> In a perfect world, I think we would have a MacBook, and we would be using one of the Mac programs because uh, the videos that we see made with that turn out a lot better, mm -hmm. and apparently it's a lot easier to use. So. Anyway. Well, most of the questions yeah um, that's that's all the usual questions yeah I mean if you guys have other questions or we didn't answer something more specific to what you're looking for to be answered uh, by all means comment below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can or save it for another Q&A yeah <laughs> anyway that's it uh, episode 38 I want to give a big shout out to a couple of new patrons we got last week uh, Dave and John thank you so much uh, you guys are really what keep us moving so uh, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments and your Facebook messages. We will see you again in a week. In a week. Bye. <laughs>